My name is Paul Rojas, and I will be talking about the overview of tests. So we cybersecurity team, we are a TK cyber solution, a security consultant. As you may know, before any penetration test could be done, we have to get authorization from a client for legal purposes. So our client as a cyber, which is the site that we're attacking, is isocyber.org, and we're going to be doing our pen testing. Get with the methodology that we use were dynamic black box applica web application pen tests. Dynamic, you ask yourself, what is that? Dynamic is when a non function testing process that covers security weaknesses and vulnerability present an application. In this case, we're, we're live as we do our testing. Black box is when you have no prior knowledge as a pen tester and the tester is granted any access to application or networks. Web application pen test is an assessment that are conducted to identify cyber security risks that could lead to unauthorized access or data exposure. The next slide is our target site homepage. This right here is the site we're targeting to do our pen test to find the vulnerability and it's called Access Cyber Org. And now everyone, at this point, I pass it on to my colleague, Omar. Before we can start a pen testing attack, we need to gather information about the target, which was um, accesscyber.org. This practice is called um, reconnaissance, and reconnaissance is a practice of discovering and collecting information about a target you're trying to exploit. We do this by using OSINT, which is O-S-I-N-T, and in short for open source intelligence, which is information gained from public available sources, such as search engines, or it could be from the dark web. The information is then used to aid in vulnerability assessments and penetration testing to gain a clearer picture of the target. Examples of these tools are Nmap, who is MS Toolbox, whatismyip.com. We decided to use whatismyip.com. And the way you go about it is put in the URL, which is www.accesscyber.org into the search bar. And it's able to provide you with the IP address. So the IP address that I came up was 162.241. 0.218.49. And it gives you further um, information about the location of that IP address, which you can see on the next slide. It shows a pinpoint location on the geograph with the latitude and longitude. So I'll pass it on to my next colleague, Ramsey. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everyone. When we scanned the client's website using pen testing tools, we found a few vulnerabilities, starting off with a lack of explain option in the security header. Web applications such as our client's website, accesscyber.org, use security patterns to configure security defenses in web browsers. Now the lack of extreme options allow the content to publishers to prevent their content from being breached in the frame by threat actor and can lead to attacks such as cross-site scripting and click jacking. Cross-site scripting is an attack in which malicious scripts are injected into the website, which can impact the said website by exposing sensitive data or redirecting them to a malicious web page. Similar to what clickjacking does, which tricks users into clicking web page elements that is invisible or disguised as another element. This can cause users to unwittingly download malware or malicious web pages and provide the credentials to threat actors. Now, I will pass it to my colleague, Jeff Dawson. So doing our pen testing for this uh, particular website, we found out that the WordPress admin uh, page was publicly accessible and at risk of being brute force. In a nutshell, brute force, it's when attackers or hackers using a series of commonly used password to crack a password. It is basically trying different combination of username and password until they find the one that works. They can use Ken in Abel or John the Weeper, which is password quackers that they can use. And we think there are some policies and technology that can, that, that can help them mitigate and avoid these kind of freaks. And I'll pass to my colleague, Steven. One of the methods we could use to mitigate brute force is basically to uh, factor authentication. And what that basically is, is when you give like an extra 
piece of information besides your username and password to verify that you are, you know, you are the owner of said account. And by doing so, you know, you only get, then you get like access to it. For example, let's say you put in your username and password. Another means of authentication would be like to enter your email to the website you're trying to gain access to. And once the website, the, web, the website would then send like key, keyword or a uh, secret notes to said email. And if you have access to that website, you basically copy the word you were sent to, to the website that way you know, the, uh, the website knows that, you know, you are, you own the email, you are uh, in fact the owner of that account and you gain access to said accounts. So I would pass the next part of this to Malachi. Hello. Uh, something else that TKH Cyber Solutions had found during their penetration test was that the target site has a bunch of unused plugins and the, the issues that result from this are that the more unused plugins, never equipment, whatever it is that you have, it drastically increases your attack surface. So it makes it easier for attackers to gain access to your site because the, there are plugins that you simply don't even remember that you have or that you haven't secured, things of that nature. And I will now pass it on to my colleague, Madrid. Basically, when we, were, when we ran um, an app and map vulnerability scan, it showed us that the Dicey Helming key exchange was insufficient boot strength. So just to break it down a little bit, not to go too deep into it, the Diffie Helming key exchange basically allows two parties who have basically have not previously met to establish a secure communication with each other. Now the security of this depends on the final um, secret key, which the secret key generates from the users or from the party's public key, which they combine to generate this final key. Now, like I was saying, the, the security of the final key depends on the size of the parameter. So usually the default size is 10 to, um, 1024 bits, which in this case, studies show that it's still breakable by powerful adversaries. And 512 to 768 bits is considered weak. Um, so in this case, even though it may be really powerful to break, it's my job to let our customer know that it's still vulnerable because studies do stay so. Let my colleague Ezra take over. Hello guys, this is Ezra. I want to discuss a little bit about ports and how they relate to this website. Now, full disclosure, this website was a very, very formidable opponent. And let me just quickly show you what I mean. So the way I like to think about it, because I'm more... As a novice hacker that I am, I'm more proficient at attacking networks. But nonetheless, I still like to see what's going on with the ports on a website. So let me, first of all, and ping accesscyber.org, which is how we were able to quickly access the IP address, which pops up right here. And we can also use other tools like uh, NSLOOKUP and get the same information. But basically, when you have an IP address and you let me just run a dodgy and map attack, this is going to be a short uh, scan. It's like the first 1,000 ports, which I'm going to show you actually the real scan, but this is a short scan. So when I run an map, it shows me the list of ports open. These are just the common ports, one through the first the first 1,000 ports. You have very common ones like the FTP for file transfers, SSH for logging into SSH servers. We have the insecure HTTP web version right here. We also have the secure version, HTTPS 443, and my friend here, MySQL here at the bottom. But let me show you the uh, scan that I did about a month ago. This was the result of scanning all 65,535 ports. So it's a little bit more ports, but you, the, the range always uh, switched because uh, I guess some ports were being closed. The system itself uh, locked out my computer and several virtual machines. It was, it had, it had very good defenses. Now, just uh, let me show you what it looks like to fail at trying to hack one of these. So let's take the FTP protocol here. And uh, I'm going to try to log in with uh, by FTP. But well, first of all, let me show you that if you echo the IP address, this is the IP address, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, export this to make me add it to a variable. And I'm going to go ahead and try to FTP login. So basically, I'm just hitting the command FTP file transfer protocol and I'm gonna log in with the same IP address. And if this was an insecure port, I'll be able to log in easily. So I'm gonna try to log in with the username anonymous. Okay, password, since I'm anonymous, I can skip it. And I shouldn't be able to see anything because I tried this about an hour ago, yeah. So yeah, authentication failed. 
And if I was in here, I would just LS and look at the files, but you are not logged in. So this is very, very, all the ports are very hardened and that's very formidable, as I said before. But one flaw that we did find in the open ports was my friend here, SSH. It was not completely vulnerable, but it was not updated. And let me show you what I mean. So we're currently, currently running uh, port five, uh, version 5.3 of SSH, which basically just requires a username and a password or some lo login keys. But it's, we're supposed to have an updated to version 9.0 that will really secure it. For all in all in a nutshell, this was a very humbling project because like I said, I, I threw everything in but the kitchen sink at this with all of my attacks and through Metasploits and all, but that, in the end, uh, yeah, I was um, not very successful at logging into an actual server, this website. So kudos to uh, WordPress for updating their security. This was a live target, it was not a game. So yeah, I have much respect to that. But that's what I have to say about ports. Um, mainly in a nutshell, just make sure you have your ports, unnecessary ports closed and updated at all times, just like this website, because uh, that was a tough cookie, I gotta say. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to my next colleague. All right, so next steps and recommendations. In order to strengthen the X-Frame option, the client can implement two directives for each page that they would like to secure. Deny, which prevents page rendering in the frame, or same origin, which allows the page to only be displayed in a frame of the same origin. Now, we can also uh, restrict admin page ac access, which only allows specific IP addresses based on who needs access. Next step would be to, uh, now to protect a variety of, of vulnerabilities, you can install WordPress security plugins like WordFence, which is a WordPress firewall, which for a premium can provide real-time updates against new security threats. There's also Google Authenticator, which is a Google-based authenticator, which adds, adds another layer of protection to your users by requiring them to input a one-time password to log in. There's also WP Fail to Ban which helps protect against brute force attacks and keeps track of successful and failed user login attempts. There's also WPS hide login, which allows you to hide the login page from malicious attackers. Now for the Diffie Hellman vulnerability, you should also increase the key from 1024 bits to 2048 bits to make it more secure. And mm. lastly, close unnecessary ports to harden your network or have your firewall automatically open and close them as needed. Thank you very much for everyone. Everyone. Just to add on to that, I missed a, um, a pretty important part when I was explaining the Diffie Hellman vulnerability. Um, so I really didn't want to get too deep into it because it gets a little complicated. But the scary thing about that, when adversaries are able to crack the value of, of these, um, of the private keys that are being generated, it's vulnerable to a man in the middle attack. And what these men and what a man in the middle attack is then basically somebody can intercept and decrypt when they actually decrypt when they when they when they have when they have the value of the of the private key, they can decrypt the whole communication and the data that's being transferred from one person to the other and they can see everything in live time. So it's very important just to make sure that you have that vulnerability taken care of. Sorry to interrupt and thank you guys. Yeah, I just wanted to finalize also a final thought was uh, this uh, website um, was, was given permission to us by Gotham to attack this his website called access.cyber.org uh, was um, a good example of, um, so we, you know, not sure we were able to, to identify the doors, not having the actual key to go in ourselves, but in the hands of a uh, nation state actors, they would definitely have um, make the keys possible to, um, infiltrate the servers and take this website for a ride. But uh, yeah, all in all, it's a very uh, good learning experience for all of us, uh, very good presentation test. And I'm happy to have tried to blow up a, a, live, a live a website. It was very interesting overall. But thank you very much, guys. If there's any questions, please follow up.